so hi everyone I'm about to make supper or dinner for the family we are making inyong we have an inyong for dinner today uh, because we're gonna have it for lunch but we got busy and I um, decided to make it for dinner usually we want to eat this for lunch because it's kind of a little bit heavy so we're doing it a bit early today so for the stew that we're gonna use to eat it we're using this stew It's an okra based stew it's made from okra and it's called Ila Ala Sekbo and that's because it's okra mixed with different things in it and that is going and then some people like to add other stew to it this is chicken stew and I already have a recipe for that so you can click that button down there to see the recipe so in your is a yam it's uh, African yam that has been dried up and grounded into this powdery form and what you're going to need is you're going to need a pot good size pot which we're going to put fill up with water like up to here and then you're going to need another container and this container will be used for when you are turning the stuff I'll show you what you're using it for and you need a spoon I don't even know whether to call this a spoon we call it orogun okay you're going to need a wooden spoon like this and then you're going to need this thing called igbako and this is also used to dish the stuff this is made from a calabash and I got all this stuff from Nigeria but you can find it in any African grocery store I mean Orogu Meji so I'm heating up about three to four cups of water and going to wait for that to come to a rolling boil before I start making the mixture so as you can see the water is coming to a rolling boil when the water turns like this for me this is what I do I reduce the heat of the water to make it stop doing that and some people don't do this but I do that and now I'm going to give it over to big sis Hi. who is going to hold the camera for me because I can't do this with holding the camera and I really want to show you guys how to mix this in your you need some muzzles <laughs> for when you make African food but it is fun to do right, right. and she has actually learned how to do it so mm -hmm. today we are making are you ready to make some in your yes okay we're ready to watch mommy make some in here so now that the water has reduced what i i stop simmering like that what i do is i get my you need this because it's very hot the pot is very hot and i'm going to turn this down and um you get a cup of this so i'm just going to take a cup of the hot water and set that aside next you want to get your orogo remember we talked about this this is actually what i'm going to use to mix the inyong i'm going to get my orogo and then i'm going to take some of the inyong okay it's almost like making mashed potato so i'm just putting it in there like that and i'm going to start mixing it start mixing it okay i'm going to increase my fire a little bit more take some more of this and continue mixing it and you want to mix it so that it's not um, creating lumps so as you mix it you're holding it down and you're mixing it really well you can see that right now it's a little bit too fluffy so what you want to do is you want to add some more of the in your powder or in your flour and you see it's kind of making that hissing sound that shows you that it's cooking. So I'm mixing it some more. Shall you know by now that you're my lady? Mm, you're the one for me. So when I've mixed it a little bit like this, I get my hot water 
and I'm going to put some a little bit of hot water in it and just going to kind of choke it <laughs> as people say kind of make a dent in it and just cover it now so I'm going to cover it I kind of let it cook for about two minutes and when it's cooking like this it's really cooking the flour some people don't do this this is the way I do it and I found that this way has worked really well in reducing the lumps when it comes to African cooking especially powdery fufu like this having lumps is something that people hate a lot so if you want to do this make sure that you try your best, best possible way of not making lumps in it two minutes is over and as you can see it's really bubbling on the side that's how you know that two minutes is over and the next thing that we do is we take our orogu again make sure that the orogu has the we put liquid on it like this and then i'm going to take the orogu and i'm going to start mixing it like this okay so all I'm doing, trying to do, I'm going to reduce by just a little bit. And all I'm just trying to do is make it as smooth as possible and make sure that there's no lumps inside. So this is where you need your muscles. <laughs> so all you people that lift weights in the gym and exercise in the gym, this is where you really need that muscle. So just mix it, mix it, mix it. And you can see the smoothening up. You can see right there is looking quite smooth so this is going to be some wonderful in your some people will take it off the fire right now and do it on the floor but um i am okay with doing it right now like this you can also turn off the fire and continue smoothening it and that will work fine also i love you all day I love you all night and even without money I love you with my life but you don't want to trust your past I found that when you make in your it is best to make it in a non-stick pot you get the smoothest feel I've tried other pots that stick and those were disaster so try making it in a non-stick pot so I think it's smooth enough So yeah, so now you can see that it's smooth enough, so it's time to dish it out. It's quite simple how you use the igbako. So um, what you do is you take the igbako, right, and you make sure that it is wet enough. Okay, so you make sure that it's wet enough. And then you take your igbako and you go to the inyong this is now in your and you take the amount you want so if it's this amount you take the amount you want take it to your plate and you can dish it just like that it's as simple as that some other people would do things like they might make a design and spread it with the bako and they can put their sauce or their stew in the middle so some people do this some people put it in plastic wrap but I normally just dish it the first way and then I put the stew in another container so this is in your this is how we make in your and for all you guys wondering you can eat it with a goosey stew you can eat it with okazi stew and you can also eat it with um, ila alasikbo I don't have a recipe for that but this is what it looks like it's okra almost like a gumbo and that's it so thanks for watching and thank you to all the people that requested this and we'll see you tomorrow in another vlog bye